of you. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about uh, the basics of the protections uh, part for the smart grid system. I will discuss about uh, that the point that why we need protection and uh, what are the components of the protection system and uh, what we will do in the further classes. As all of you know that uh, the power system is becoming more and more complex due to the integration of uh, fax devices, renewables and also we have deregulation markets. So, due to this uh, the system is more complex and the protection system is also becoming more and more challenging day by day. But however, with the availability of uh, good computational facilities and advanced signal processing techniques and of course, we have uh, very much dedicated communication and computer infrastructure. So, it is quite possible to have very improved and advanced protection schemes for the smart grid system. Now, the point is if you could see that earlier our uh, network I mean distribution side mostly was uh, passive in nature, but due to the integration of renewables like solar based technique or solar based renewable system or wind system or small hydro or we have fuel cells batteries, the network is now becoming more and more active in structure active in nature. So, as a result the whatever technique protection schemes we have maintained for the earlier system those techniques uh, need uh, a very wide range of uh, basically recalculation or rearrangement or uh, more innovative uh, structures or innovations are necessary for the protection part of the smart grid system. So, keeping in this particular uh, mind, so in this particular curriculum or course, we have kept also the protection schemes for the smart grid environment. First, we will discuss about the basics of the protection system, mostly the digital relays will concentrate and after onwards, we will discuss about uh, the very first term that is islanding relays how this islanding relays basically help to island the system or microgrid system that also we will discuss very widely and extensively. And then we will go for coordination of directional overcurrent relays where we will see that how this overcurrent and directional relays are the essential components for the smart grid environment where the as far as the protection is concerned. So, coming to this uh, structure, it is a very known structure, known layout for all of us, but you know the every corner of this particular power network, we need this protection scheme. Without protection, the system is basically not possible to operate perfectly at 50 hertz signal. You know that 5 percent of the money basically we dedicate for the protection infrastructure of the system of the power network. You can start from this generation that is here the generation we have this type of transformer and we have the transmission corridor we have the transmission infrastructure that is basically 138 to 765 kV range and also India is aiming for 1200 kV infrastructure of the transmission system. Next we have step down transformer and yes we have sub transmission system distribution system and finally, the consumers. If you could see the wide range of this power network at every corner, we have to basically protect every element, element by element we have to protect it. So, that our system will operate in a reliable mode, in a very accurate mode and uh, we can supply the quality things, quality supply to the customers that is actually our aim. And that is also aim of this smart grid environment. So, where we should not get any interrupt interruptible power, the power should not be interrupted to the customers and the quality of the supply that is the frequency and voltage should be maintained at the particular level and so without disturbing anything the customers should be satisfied and 24 and 7 power supply should be maintained with in an efficient manner, in a first manner and in a smart manner. So, that is what this uh, smart grid protection schemes aim. And if you could see that in every in cricket mass, we basically go for this helmet, we can we go for pads. So, these are basically for the protection of the body. So, similarly for protection of uh, all the elements of the smart grid system, we need some protection elements. 
See this already we have discussed that our system was earlier, if you could see this uh, central utility system, it was just in a one go or one flow direction based power flow system. This was actually the central generation and we have further the customers. The power flow was unidirectional, but now the scenario has been changed that here if you could see we have central generation, we have like fuel cell, we have PV and also we have battery and also we have wind. So, so many renewable energy sources are now integrating, they are penetrated to the network and this power flow is now becoming multidirectional, it is not anymore unidirectional. That is the first point we have to be very careful, so while designing this protection schemes of the system or network. That is our first motivation, that if this is a key point basically, this is a main driving force that uh, it compels us that we have to develop some new protection schemes or algorithms or techniques, otherwise the system cannot operate at the 50 hertz, this straight 50 hertz signal. We have to maintain certain accurate protection schemes. And uh, next if you could remember our last blackout in India in 2012 July 30, 31st that this whole northern grid, eastern grid and northeast grid, these three grids are just disconnected from the rest of the two grids. That is what it motivates us that this particular blackout, this is a very big disturbance, a very large disturbance. Due to this disturbance, 620 million people affected this figure is not a small figure and you know it had happened due to the protection failure only. One of the digital relays that is uh, known as distance relay, the it was due to the load encroachment problem, the foreign KV line was tripped and after that other lines are overloaded and finally the disturbance propagated and this particular system event is known as cascading failure of the transmission lines or lines. So, due to that the whole grid northern grid, then the northeast grid and eastern grid also to some extent all are disconnected from the rest of the two grids. So, due to this we have lot of problems we faced in the last 2012 and uh, many more blackouts also had happened throughout the globe in India also. So, we are trying to just check this kind of major disturbances as quick as possible, so that we can save our economic and our also we can save our uh, society and also our citizen. That is what our main motivation, that if we keep all the techniques very strong and efficient, so of course, we can always check this kind of major disturbances. Coming to the topic, what is that our uh, relay as I said, the digital relay or electromechanical relay or static relay, you can say, so these relays are the heart of the protection infrastructure. So, without relays there is no question of protecting any equipment. So, that is what uh, yes of course, we have many other protection uh, devices like fuse, we have reclosures, but however, the uh, relay is the major components, one of the major components as far as the protection infrastructure is concerned. Now, if you could see here we have electromechanical relay, we have static relays, we have digital relay. Now, the question is uh, why I have kept these three figures, because we have one evolution. We started with electromechanical relay, again we used the static type relay, also now we are using this digital relay. The question is why this evolution, because we are moving towards smart grid, we are moving towards a computerized uh, digitalized network or society or power network, where we have to basically make the components to speak to each other to share their data information with each other. So, in that platform this electromechanical relays are not anymore capable of doing that and where this digital relay is possible, with help of this digital relay it is quite possible that two relays or 10 number of relays or 100 number of relays can speak to each other. They can share their data information with each other or those relays can send the voltage, current, frequency, power, whatever the information we need at the central label, central control center of the smart grid system that is also quite possible. If you could see that uh, I have just pointed out few points, this aging production facilities, discontinued components and parts and a shortage of uh, manufacturing 
and testing technicians. So, these are the uh, demerits of this electromechanical based relays that is why we are moving towards this digital relay. Another advantages I mean this PPT emphasizes these are the advantages of the digital relay and these are the disadvantages. Also this uh, points also motivate us that why we are just choosing this digital relay, why not electromechanical relay, why not static relay. The first point is the cost of the relay. Yes, I uh, will just address here the cost of the digital relay is more than the electromechanical relay because we are trying to uh, minimize or customize properly the different components of this particular digital relay and we are also trying to reduce this cost also as this electronic gadgets are mostly used inside the digital relay like uh, analog to digital converter, the processor or digital to analog converter. So, different types of electronic gadgets are involved inside this particular relay digital platform based relays. So, we are trying to reduce this cost also slowly. The second one is this self checking. This relay has the capability of self checking if any fault occurs inside the circuit of this digital relay it is possible quite possible to check itself that yes at this point there is some fault this relay can take care. It is reliable and accurate because uh, all the flow of the power or the signals are basically controlled using the central controller uh, and also the flow data flow. Uh, basically are very quite uh, reliable inside the structure of the digital relay. It has also the function of auto reclosing and this one is very important functional flexibility, multifunctional flexibility. Here I just want to address that suppose if I will purchase one digital relay that this particular relay will work for me as an overcurrent relay, directional relay, distance relay, differential relay earth fault relays. So, we have different types of uh, relays uh, in our power system. Uh, those relays are basically used to protect the different components like transmission or distribution lines, transformers or some different type of components. So, in that case what we do basically a single relay if it, it will just act as uh, different types of functions. So, it is a very like a gift for us like we can we will be happy with less cost we can have multi functions. So, that particular multifunctional facility is available with the digital relay. We have also system integration, system integration is quite possible as we have discussed from the digital relays or we can always share the data from one substation to other substation, one area to other area that is where this system integration and adaptive relaying is another feature of this digital relay where uh, with the system parameter change or with the system network uh, configuration change uh, this uh, relay will just adopt accordingly to change the settings. So, that we can protect for any disturbance, so that we can protect the network for any disturbance which is going to be inserted in the circuit. And also it has this uh, data storage that is the fault locating diagnostic and uh, uh, these are the features uh, other features of this digital relay where it has the capability of uh, detecting the fault where the disturbance has occurred or uh, how to take uh, proper remedies against this particular it will also give the pinpointed position of the disturbance. So, that we can further uh, maintain for go for the maintenance purpose. So, these are the uh, different features uh, um, of this particular digital relay and the space uh, is also matter where basically we can reduce by proper design of this electronic parts of which are involved in the digital relay. The digital relay space can be also more compact. Nowadays, we are moving towards the development of different uh, advanced technologies. So, with that uh, further also the space of this digital relay can be reduced. And this uh, coming to the disadvantages of this digital relay, we have EMI and RFI effect, electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference. Those interferences are basically present in digital relay and short life with uh, evolution of next generation or processor. You know as already we have uh, discussed in digital relay we use the electronic gadgets. So, if the processor suppose processor 1 or 2 I am using. So, some version of the processor if is coming with uh, some involvement or 
with technology development, so we have to basically rely on the latest technology or latest uh, best uh, technology best processor we have to utilize in the digital relay. That is what this uh, uh, with the evolution of next generation processor we have to replace the technology with the recent or advanced phase of the products. This is the soft systems of a digital relay. If you could see that we are just tapping this voltage current signals from the substation or switch head. In the substation inside substation we have measurement CTs and PTs. Uh, this PTs uh, provide the voltage signal and CTs provide the current signal. So, there we will just uh, tap the voltage signal and the current signal and this current voltage signal signals will be fed to the surge filters. Surge filter means uh, it will just remove any surge, any high frequency component uh, which is present uh, within this voltage current signals. So, surge filters will help in removing those high frequency components. Next, it will go to the signal conditioning stage. The signal conditioning block helps in maintaining the signals at the desired frequency level. That is what the signal conditioning block uh, does. Uh, basically, we have low frequency uh, low pass filters and where we will just allow the desired frequency that is 50 hertz signal and also will remove the high frequency signals or undesired signal frequencies, I mean frequency components. That is what this signal conditioning block helps. After signal conditioning block, it will go to the ADC that is the analog to digital converter. There basically we have the one sampling clock is ready to sample the data at particular sampling frequency. What sampling frequency will maintain so that uh, the voltage current signals are going to be sampled at a particular time interval. So, 1 kilohertz or 2 kilohertz or 4 kilohertz what sampling frequency we are going to maintain. This ADC will help up to this uh, we have the signal analog and here the signal will be converted from analog to digital platform. So, this conversion is possible using this ADC analog to digital converter. After this uh, conversion of this analog signal to digital, it will go to directly to the processor. The processor is basically the central unit of this uh, central block of this digital relay where all the algorithms are executed. If it is basically an overcurrent relay, the overcurrent algorithm is going to be executed inside the process of this digital relay. If it is basically a distance relay, or a multifunctional relay. So, all the algorithms are just written inside burnt inside this processor. So, that whatever the options or modes will just uh, opt. So, accordingly the output is going to be coming to our system. After this processor we have also different parts like for this processor we have RAM, we have ROM, PROM, also EPROM and mass memory. After this, the digital output will go to another signal conditioning stage and from here we can take it out for our external use. You know this digital relay provides the digital signals and also analog signals. After this digital relay, this digital signal we can always convert this D, D to A, digital to analog converter we have also. If you need this uh, analog signal from the analog D to a AC converter, we can take the analog signal. And also we have like a serial port, parallel port to communicate one relay with other relay. The two relays will speak to each other or they can share the, their data with each other using this communication facility which is basically present inside the digital relay. Now, I will discuss here uh, three points. The first one is the RAM, second one is ROM and the third one is PROM or EPROM. What are the functions of these uh, memories of the digital relay? This is the internal view of this digital relay where you could see here this is the processor. This is our processor card and these three sections we have shown the CTs. Inside the digital relay also we have CTs. They will just scale down the current and it will convert to the voltage and it will supply to the ADC and from ADC it will go to the processor. 
all the calculations and the based on the voltage signals only. Even if we are supplying the current to the digital relay, it will convert to the voltage signal, then it will be used inside the processor. Now, coming to this RAM part, this RAM, it is basically random access memory. It holds the input sample data as they are brought in and processed. Basically, it is a, it is a kind of uh, scratch pad. Here, it I have written here. Uh, it will just uh, catch the signals. It will just hold the uh, this particular digital signals. Then, it will allow uh, to move further. It will allow to pass the signal to the processor. Again, after a certain time interval, previous data will be lost, and new fresh data will reach to the RAM, and again it will process to the processor. So basically, it's a it's a uh, sketch pad uh, which is basically used during the relay execution algorithm. When the algorithm is executed inside the relay, so this uh, particular section memory section of the digital relay will supply the data to the processor for execution of the algorithm. And you know it is uh, random, it is a random base, uh, it is not permanent memory. Now coming to this ROM, it is basically the read only memory. This read only memory or programmable read only memory sometimes PROM we also call it, is used to store the programs permanently. You know we are uh, building this programs or algorithms inside the processor. So, those uh, algorithms programs are going to be stored uh, permanently uh, inside the digital relay and that is basically possible that particular algorithm is possible using the ROM read only memory. The third one is EPROM that is the erasable ROM right. It is used for storing certain parameters like the relay settings. We will discuss about this what is the relay setting in over current relay we set the current value. So, what is the initial current magnitude so that if any current exceeds that particular setting value then the relay is going to be mal operated or it, it will just uh, it will just uh, give some trip command. It is not mal operated it is going to give some trip command if it is exceeds certain threshold value or setting value. That setting is basically present inside this EPROM that is what. So, these are some of the memory sections of this digital relay and also we have uh, this uh, we will discuss in this slide the CT different type of CT connections for the digital relay. This is suppose the main CT, this is the power line where the current is flowing through this particular line power conductor and this CT is the you know the in case of current transformer we have the primary as the power conductor where the power is uh, moving I mean it is flowing from one direction to other direction and this is our CT secondary. Uh, we are expecting we are scaling down the current to a lower level uh, which is going to be fed to the digital relay right. So, this is actually the main CT and these are the uh, registers uh, part uh, secondary side of the CT and from here we can tap the current values to the relays or we can also feed to other uh, meters these are the things or we can also send this uh, current data to other computer based relays. This is uh, this type of connection is known as the direct connection directly the relay is connected to the secondary side of the city that is where the name is direct connection of the main city secondary to the digital relay because we basically the relay takes uh, current and voltage from the secondary side of the city or PT then the processor will execute the algorithm and it will just provide some trip signal that is what the M that is what the uh, thing um, happens inside the digital relay. Now, in the B section the B figure if you could see here we have the main city after that we have auxiliary city directly here the digital relay is not connected to the main city rather the relay is connected to the auxiliary city secondary. Here is the auxiliary city, this is the primary and this is the secondary. This secondary is connected to the computer relay. Sometimes this digital relay is also known as computer relay or numeric relay because uh, it is uh, basically if you could see the digit, this digital relay operation is mostly it is related to the computer, how the computer operates the same way the digital relay operates. This third one is uh, 
we have this uh, voltage transformer connection this is our PT we have primary section this is the primary winding and this is our secondary winding two different fuses uh, we can take it the secondary voltage we can take to other relays or meters and also will supply to by scaling down the voltage further we can always supply to the digital relay. This is basically the potential divider section. Poten potential divider section we use because uh, the relay is basically it is a very sensitive device it is an electronic device. So, there we expect we should uh, scale down the voltage and current to lower level so that the ADC card and the processor card should not be affected. This is how this in Indian standard we have uh, the CD secondary current is within 1 ampere and 5 ampere that is what the Indian practice. And if you could see that uh, uh, nowadays uh, the manufacturers basically they manufacture the CT ratio in the range of like 50s to 5, 100s to 5 or 150 is to 5 or 200 is to 5 and so on. So, by using this uh, CT ratios we can always uh, calculate uh, I mean the current corresponding primary current inside the digital relay. Similarly, for PT the secondary voltage we have 110 volt phase to phase right. So, this is the input voltage this is the primary of the this uh, PT and this is secondary side and here also we can divide the voltages using the voltage divider or this is potential divider and we can supply less amount of voltage. Yes, of course, that will be again multiplied with the ratio inside the process of the digital relay to get the exact voltage information right. So, now we will come to multiple signal sampling processes and this its organization. We have uh, now started with uh, converting this analog signal to digital platform and uh, you know uh, MUX is a basically one electronic uh, component which helps in converting this carrying out this uh, many analog signal to many digital signal uh, uh, many analog signal or many to one also. This MUX is a multiplexed input. So, these are the analog inputs may be voltage signal may be current signals will supply to the input side of this MUX and from MUX it will just go to the ADC. This ADC is basically the block where this analog signal is going to be converted to digital signal and of course, the sampling clock is necessary as we have discussed earlier that the sampling clock block, block this particular block will provide this FS sampling frequency at what rate we are going to sample the voltage current signals that is what the function of this sampling clock block. And uh, also this is one feature and uh, further this is another architecture where also we use sample and hold circuit before passing to this MUX the voltage current signals and after that we just provide this uh, different uh, analog digital converter for converting this analog signal to digital. And sometimes also we do in this manner also this is the third one separate ADC for each channel. Let us say I have three phase voltages this is VA, VV, okay, this VC all are uh, basically the analog signals and also we have current signals I, AT and I B T and I C T. So, if we have uh, multiple channel signals in that case also we can use individual ADC, individual ADC and to digital converter that is what this particular uh, section and using this buffer will supply to the processor for the action. Now, here will come that uh, sampling process as you know uh, in the digital relay platform the sampling process is very very important. Uh, this is how this uh, signal processing techniques are nowadays uh, are very in, uh, strong basically if you have to use this digital relay. So, we have to make very advanced signal processing technique techniques should be evolved quickly. So, that it will just process the signals and it will estimate the phases or frequency for our use. If the relay is basically let us say based on the distance relay. So, we have to calculate the distance of the fault at what uh, location the fault has occurred the fault has incepted. So, if our signal processing technique is not that much of efficient our uh, signal processing is not strong. So, obviously, it will be delayed in calculating this phases or calculating the distance of the fault. 
That is why the signal process signaling uh, sampling process is one of the major part parts of the signal processing technique sampling process. If we just take uh, one signal at what sampling rate we are going to sample the signal that matters a lot. We will discuss about this particular point that how the sampling process uh, affects the performance of different uh, relaying techniques or relaying algorithms. If I will maintain at 2 kilohertz what is going to happen? If I will maintain my sampling frequency at uh, 2 kilohertz, so what is going to be uh, result? So, that is what the impact or effect of sampling process on digital relay platform or digital relay processor or algorithm execution you can say. Let us say we have taken this XT and YT2 signals and uh, at certain time Tx and Ty how to calculate this theta uh, you know this uh, theta is equal to omega t. So, if uh, we have like at two uh, different I mean phases of signals XT and YT for complete their samples at instant Tx and Ty the references for the two phases will differ from each other by angle of theta. So, at time this T x what is the phasor angle phase angle of this particular signal x and at T y what is the phase angle. So, difference between two we can always subtract and we can calculate this angle difference between two signals right. So, uh, by this signal processing technique it is quite possible we can always compare that uh, from the reference point let us say this is another signal. So, this is my reference signal. So, what is the phase difference between these two signals? So, at this point what is the time and the corresponding angle at this point of time. So, what is the corresponding angle theta 2? So, let us take the difference between these two we can always calculate the phase angle difference between the two signals whether it is leading to the signal or it is lagging to the signal. So, of course, uh, we have take some reference signal that is very very important without reference uh, it is not possible to say that whether the signal is leading or lagging that is important reference point is very important. Now, uh, that is what the sampling I mean we have taken this 50 hertz signal see this is uh, here 0 0.02 1 cycle ends here 1 cycle starts from here 1 cycle ends here the next 0 0.04 second cycle 0 0.06 third cycle 0 0.08 fourth and so on. So, if we will take uh, let us say at 1 millisecond interval that is basically f s is equal to 1 kilohertz and your sampling time interval is equal to 1 millisecond. So, of course, we will get 20 samples per cycle 20 samples that is what shown here if we will calculate within this 0 0.02 exactly 20 samples we are going to calculate and within this 0 0.04 we are going to calculate 40 samples. So, now uh, the sampling rate is very very important we should not uh, exceed the over sampling or under sampling the sampling should be perfect as we have discussed uh, during our PMU part of the lectures that already I have discussed what is NTLizing effect. Uh, sometimes what happens in digital relays or in a power network uh, while sampling the signals uh, the fundamental signals uh, should come to the processor because we are interested to calculate uh, the fundamental frequency component of the phases like uh, the phase angle or magnitude of the fundamental frequency signal and sometimes intentionally also we calculate the phase angle and magnitude of some certain harmonic signals for our application purpose. But anyway uh, if we suppose sometimes what happens the higher frequency signals behave as like a fundamental frequency signal or low frequency signal. So, that kind of effect is basically known as a lazing effect in digital relay platform also we do that we basically remove that aliasing effect using the anti aliasing filters that is that comes under the signal conditioning block. And uh, apart from that also we maintain this Nyquist criteria that uh, during the sampling we have to maintain the sampling frequency in such a manner that the sampling frequency should be two times greater than the higher frequency component which is present inside the signal. So, those are the concept uh, techniques are uh, maintained uh, while designing the digital relay. Uh, this is another sampling rate 
uh, you know uh, if you go for lower sampling rate or higher sampling rate. So, corresponding number of samples per cycles uh, basically uh, cycle it will reduce the number of samples per cycle uh, is going to be reduced are going to reduce. If we take let us say 2 kilohertz then the number of samples will increase. If we take 1 kilohertz the number of samples per cycle will be 20. So, similarly, if we just keep on increasing or decreasing the sampling rate, the corresponding number of samples per cycle will also reduce, increase or decrease. Now, we will come to uh, three major terms which are used for the digital relay platform we will discuss and the subsequent classes uh, will discuss in detail the protection part of the smart grid environment. Uh, first, we will start with the islanding detection of the smart grid environment then I will go for the directional over current drilling practice uh, which are basically used for the protection of the smart grid environment. Now, I will come to this uh, relay reliability term. You know the reliability term itself uh, defined as the redundancy it's by can be achieved by redundancy duplicating the relaying system. And uh, this redundancy can be costly proposition another way to improve the reliability to ask an existing relay say protecting an apparatus say to back up the protection of apparatus B. This uh, figure can be also quantified like this the percentage of reliability is equal to the number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips plus number of incorrect trips. Suppose, let us say we have uh, one power network and we have different loads or enables are integrated in the system and also we have loads at different buses and in that case what will happen and how this relay will trip at what condition it should trip at what condition it should not trip that that is basically decided by this reliability property of the digital relay. And this reliability is divided in two parts that are basically the dependability and security of the digital relay. So, we will discuss about this uh, uh, next slide this reliability uh, two types dependability and the security. Now, coming to this part this equation if you could see what is this numerator thing number of correct trips because we are designing certain device this particular digital relay it should trip when it is desired, but it should not trip when it is not desired when it is not intended to do that that is what the meaning of this particular reliability index term. If suppose I have just mounted here one digital relay, this uh, digital relay DR, if any fault occurs here in this section, so what will happen? So, this line is now a faulty line, but however, if I will just denote A bus, B bus, C bus, D bus. Now, this A bus, B bus, this line AB is basically one healthy line, and similarly, this line CD is also one healthy line the relays should not the relays which are present at different buses they should not respond for this particular fault remember this is very very important. We should understand that what is the meaning of this dependability what is the meaning of the security what is the meaning of this reliability. The relay should be so reliable as the name suggests reliability means it should be so reliable it will just trip for what purpose it is designed or it is intended that is what this meaning of this number of correct trips divided by the number of desired trips plus the number of incorrect trips right. So, the desired trips plus the number of incorrect trips total number of trips or the relay will produce and that is what the denominator part. Now, if you we'll come to the dependability part this relay is said to be dependable if it trips when it is expected to trip this is very important see already we have discussed in this particular figure that if some fault will just uh, occur or the fault is going to be incepted in line section this B C. So, relay D R is responsible to clear to that particular fault. However, this uh, let us say this is R 1 this is R 2 this is R 3. However, at this point this R 1 and R 3 are not going to respond for this particular fault F which is incepted in line section B C that is what the meaning of this dependability function or dependability property of the digital relay. Now, it is uh, it should trip if it is expected to trip if any fault is within this zone we will discuss what is the zone of the digital relays. 
if the fault is within the defined zone or area of this particular relay, then the relay is going to respond. That is what the dependability and also we sometimes um, quantify this uh, figure that is this word the dependability, how the number of correct trips divided by the number of desired trips. So, that is what this uh, dependability percent is. Now, the third one is the relay security. The security is that property of the relay where the relay is uh, basically designed not to operate for any outside zone faults. Suppose, let us say some fault is uh, let us say as I discussed in this figure the fault is in section B C. Now, this relay R 1, R 3 should remain silent. This three, these two relays out of these three relays, two relays should not operate for the fault which is incepted in section B C. That is what the security of this property of this two relays. Only this relay R 2 is going to respond for the fault which is incepted in section B C. That is what this security term. And uh, how to quantify this? The number of correct trips divided by the total number of trips. That is what this security is defined in figure. So, in this particular class uh, we have just started the protection aspect of the smart grid course. In this uh, course that is our introduction to smart grid, uh, we are just trying to have information or uh, some concepts regarding the protection infrastructure and uh, here we have discussed the basic block diagram for the digital relay and where we have discussed how this analog signal flows and it comes to the processor and further is goes out for uh, taking out giving some command to the circuit breaker or also this digital relay also will communicate to other relays which are present in the inside this network of the smart grid environment. And also we have discussed the sampling rate and how this uh, particular sampling rate we will discuss in the further classes and thank you today.